Hello, everyone. Welcome to You Have Hundreds of Clouds Deployed, Now What Genius? To start us off, I introduce you to the lovely, talented, and fierce Kayla Fromey. And this is Lee Revere. <laughs> so, AIC is a massively distributed, large OpenStack cloud. It is a platform that hosts uh, or has many tools to have automation from end to end. There's a lot of effort that goes into deploying one cloud site, times that by 80 or 100 or hundreds, and you have a, a lot of automation that needs to be put in place. And it's not about automating each individual piece, but from end to end. So when you've got 80 plus sites uh, with uh, two regions per site, you know, 160 plus zones, so 160 individual clouds more or less, and managing that when you have uh, tenants who aren't in, but two to possibly all of them. How do you keep track of where they are? How do you put their loads in the right place? Make sure their tenancy set up, their images are there. All of that becomes a bigger challenge. So we had to develop a number of tools and our whole goal for everything obviously is to automate all of it. There are a lot of manual processes that were taking days, hands off with different teams. And we wanted to make that streamlined so that one person could do what several groups were doing. And the only way we could do that, obviously, was, that was how, all about automation. So we created a number of tools to meet our specific needs. The first one's actually under development. This is how uh, capacity planners take their plan of execution, plan of demands, and put them into a tool that they can model things and, and change on a regular basis. I mean, these things change weekly. So we needed to be able to reserve things like uh, you have a tenant that's coming in and you need to reserve their capacity. But is that capacity that they're bringing on new hardware to support so you don't want to reserve the existing infrastructure and take up for other tenants capacity for expansion. So you need to be able to reserve things that aren't even deployed yet as well as things that you needed more immediately. Um, after that we have AIC formation. Um, this one's had a significant impact. We can reduce the workload that these are things we've been doing for 20 plus years, spreadsheets, Visio diagrams, all of that. It would take two and a half or more weeks for the groups that were involved in putting those together. We can do it in 10 minutes or less. OpSimple is actually our automation for all of the deployment. So these tools all talk to each other. So there's an API available in formation that when all of the design work is done, there's automation to other systems for IP allocation, for DNS, it makes all of that information available in an API that our deployment software reads to pull all the information it needs to do the actual deployment. From OpSimple, you have the self-service portal. Now that OpSimple has deployed the site and has the cloud running, you're going to start provisioning tenants on it. So this is just a nice web interface that allows tenants to come in and create their, you know, their tenancy in the number of sites that they're supposed to be in. And it gives it that front end for ease of use that then hands off to like OpenStack resource, ma resource Manager and Valet to go actually do the deployments, to put the images in, to create the tenancies, to put the flavors, everything that those tenants need in the places that they exist. It's fancy. <laughs> I, I just like watching it. <laughs> Formation's the one I'm the most proud of. Um, this is one that uh, I've been a network engineer for more years than I want to admit. And we used to have to do these manually. So we'd create a, a rack elevation in Visio or a spreadsheet, um, populate a bunch of information about all the different devices. Then you do a cable map spreadsheet. You know, you got thousands of cables. Great opportunity for human error. Done you have it people many times. emailing them back and forth yep. from stage to stage where it opens up for mistakes and things getting out of sync, which then turns into a deployment error because you have formation feeding your deployment automation. We'd lose days going back and forth on spreadsheets. So then OpSimple will take the information from formation, create the necessary YAML files used for the deployment, and go through and do the deployment. Start out with the seed node, you know, metal as a service type stuff, um, and then feeds into fuel and deploys the entire OpenStack environment as well as our VNFs that are our non-OpenStack infrastructure components. 
So after you have your site deployed, we have the self-service portal that Lee mentioned, and it serves as a centralized portal for anyone to go in and order their resources and for a tenant to be created. After your tenant's created, or while your tenant's being created, uh, SSP feeds information to ORM, OpenStack Resource Manager, and ORM creates the flavors and uh, keeps the images consistent so that we don't have different types of images across our massive platform. It also allows uh, flavors to be created in a similar fashion. And again, just enjoy the animation or the... the While you're creating a tenant, uh, and we have clouds around the world, uh, specific VNFs and tenants need to be placed in certain locations and also have uh, other things to be included while, to be considered while that t uh, VM is being spun up. So like affinity groups and maybe you want to be two VMs to be close to each other, maybe you don't. Um, no, Valet acts as a, a plug-in to the Nova scheduler to do those things. It, it has a little more enhanced features to it to, so that you know, you don't want to put two high capacity workloads, you know, on the same node. So it takes into consideration what those loads are and separates them out further than just saying, I want these nodes, my two redundant nodes in different racks. It looks at how much you're putting in this one node and make sure you don't overload it with the similar workloads. So after you have uh, your clouds deployed, your tenants created, now what? Continue the automation. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you were going to start talking about Automation 2020. <laughs> so like we uh, talked earlier, automation of a platform is not just about automating the individual pieces, but bringing those things together using APIs and microservices and building an ecosystem of applications for a platform with many different clouds, with many clouds. So if you think about all the things that we just discussed, you're introducing this new hardware that you had a tool designed for you. It's created the cable rack spreadsheet, it's created the elevations and all, but somebody has to go back in and put all that into, into inventory. So why just why do that more than once? If you've got a tool with the APIs, your inventory systems will pull it. You give a notification that you have an update or a new site, and they can pull just the pieces or the, the entire site, as well as feeding all the additional tools, passing that same information down instead of just telling somebody there's another, another site, giving them a spreadsheet, they take it, modify it, do whatever they do with it, just keep it all in the same system and, and passing it down the chain. Before we go into any questions, the LQ is a working group that at and uh, participates in and leads to uh, work with other large telecoms and other large companies for uh, contributing operator needs to the OpenStack. So, uh, any questions? We have a lot of customized code for our requirements, yes, but it is still coming from Trunk. Uh, we have a few different versions running right now. Yeah, we have Juno and Kilo running, and uh, next year we've, we've started the OpenStack Helm project to do Kubernetes-based deployments with OpenStack, and so we're looking to jump to as close as possible to the OpenStack, current OpenStack release next year. of OpenStack? Well, some of the tools we just mentioned, and like uh, Valet, that's being pushed back to the, the community. That's already been posted. I think ORM is, we're in the process of doing. So we're contributing back these automation tools. But to your point, uh, we do, do use Open Contrail, and even the things that we've done in Fuel, all of the work that we've needed that has been customized, uh, Marantis has pushed that back into the community as well. So for the most part, all of the things that we're having people customize that we need is getting pushed back up into the, the core. Let me give you this. Yeah. I was supposed to repeat your question. Right? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so there are like 100 uh, data centers, uh, I guess, are uh, different, the OpenStack. So are those different OpenStack, they have the 
they have some kind of the upper, there's one more layer on, above that is doing orchestration, doing some kind of federation or, or some kind of uni unified management for the, all those different uh, open stack. Is this a leading question about ONAP? <laughs> yeah. So you might be talking about ONAP as far as stitching together the WAN or doing some of the resource orchestration for tenant space, or you're talking about ORM that goes out and does all of the placement of the tenants and the various locations that they're supposed to be as long as they're images and, and the other unique things for that tenancy? Yep, so that, that was the answer. ORM does a, a lot of it for pushing the tenant stuff around so that we're sewing all these clothes together. So you, know, so you don't have to go and log into each Horizon dashboard and do these things. You, know, you push it once through ORM and it starts with a self-service portal so that you know, the users have a web interface to do it. And then ORM knows to go and create these things in all these different locations. But then ONAP, to Paul's point, would be the network portion to stitch it all together and even substantiate or instantiate the tenancy VMs it for some of the VNFs. The VNFs yep. yeah. It's all been given to the community. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? If you want to have some follow-ups on it, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. Perfect. I think we're out of time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.